Uh, let's let's try to figure out what uh, what we have discussed, and we're going to start off with that group. So, yeah, share with us what you have discussed. Yeah, new findings. Okay, so we actually found out that identity uh, and nationality can be two different things depending on each one of us and depending on uh, each uh, one experiences. And we sort of um, divided into two sections, one's nationality and then one's identity, and took uh, topics which uh, we thought would answer the questions. And we all were agreed that what's nationality, or it's basically it's a legal relationship between the person and the state, and that's what we all agree with. But when we came up to what's identity, it can be something to, not related to nationality, uh, depending on each of us. And the first topic we discussed about is about uniqueness. So for example, when you go to a foreign country, when you go to a different environment, when you talk with different people, you really feel uh, your unique uh, culture or history um, and your way of thinking. And you can feel unique about that, about your identity, because you come from a different uh, country. And the second um, theme we talked about is life experiences. So for example, for, example, for my case, um, for his case, we grew up, uh, both of our parents, um, my parents are Japanese, his parents are from Saudi Arabia, but we grew up in a different country, so we had these two, we grew up with two different cultures, which uh, enabled us to have a more flexibility and diversity in our way of thinking and not 100% uh, uh, relying on one nationality. And the third topic we thought about is about cultural comfort. So, for example, in her case, she uh, is, when she was working with a team, with a foreign team, she really felt uh, the cultural differences, for example, it can be about the time or it can be about you know, something really for you, it's natural, natural actions you do, but uh, and you feel you get used to it and you feel comfortable with it. So you feel attached to it and that's what we call cultural comfort and that's your identity. But also your difference. So your difference is when, in her case, she uh, went to the road she really felt about her identity because our people were different. Because there's other differences, you feel your own difference. And then we talked about, so then, when nationality and identity are related, what kind of uh, topic, what kind of uh, thing we can think about? Okay. okay, just to conclude this. So, most of the relationship between nationality and identity became clear after, oh, sorry after uh, clearing up these points. But one interesting idea that came up is when certain events happen, such as Olympics, a war, national disaster, um, your identity becomes so close to your nationality and you start to um, work with everyone else, um, opposed when it's peace or there's nothing happening. Mm -hmm. And um, finally, there is a question that we throw in, in the middle and I would like to ask everyone else. Are you proud? to be your nationality? Are you proud to be Japanese? Are you proud to be American? Are you proud to be whatever nationality you are from? I'm asking nationality, and are you proud? And we, we, it's basically the question is, whether you answer yes or no, um, I think asking the question is really wrong. Mm. Uh, you, you cannot be proud about something that you have no hand in. Mm. Uh, and we keep saying, because a lot of people say um, pride, for example. Uh, American pride, or Japanese pride, or Saudi pride as well. Uh, we have, we, we face it everywhere. So, pride is basically on something that you have achieved, or you have. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm proud to be graduated from Keio University, for example, uh, or I'm proud to achieve, the, or to raise my son, or I'm proud to um, uh, build this company, or something like that. But mm -hmm. it's hard to say I'm proud to be Japanese, or I'm proud to mm -hmm. be Saudi, because you can say I'm happy. Mm -hmm. to be a certain nationality, or I'm, mm -hmm. I'm happy to be from that family, or etc. So, I do this. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi. <laughs> so, I'm senior Sun Car School three years student, and then I was in Oregon last year. I just came back from Oregon last month. So, nice to meet you. Good, good. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming. So, we were. We had three opinions, so we have yes, we have no, and then one is the, like, it doesn't matter because we love our parents. So if our parents are Japanese, yes, I like to be born in Japan. If our parents is American, yes, we like, we love to be born in America. And speaking about Japan, we have so many history, because it starts like hundred or seven hundred, you know. And then I was in history class in America, and I was so surprised because it starts from 1730 something. It's a very short history in America. But in Japan, we have long, long history, and it makes nationality because we have our own culture and our good food. Like, I love sushi, but if I eat sushi in Japan, America, it's like sushi. It's, you know, California rogue is not sushi, right? <laughs> and before I went to America, I really wanted to be American because they have long, long, beautiful hair and they, they have blue eyes and they're so free. But now I love being Japanese because we have own culture and it's just beautiful. So. And identity is we notice languages because it's yes. Okay. Okay. Good try. Good try. Yeah. Good try. Yeah. about nationality versus identity and what percentage of the language is constitute the identity versus nationality and we never got into the conclusion but uh, nationality is definitely composed by the culture she talked about sushi so food is definitely part of it and uh, culture is developed by the history of the country so Japan has over 2,000 years and um, versus America just had the 300 years and constituted by the many different um, ethnicities. So we talked about ethnicity, nationality, identity, and then we talked about how nation is composed, how UN is recognized one country as a nation, and it's depending on the um, economic system, the monetary system that they have, and the political and legal system. Is it equal to the nationality? And we never concluded that conversation. So we jumped around into the many different section and um, never concluded, and she tried really hard to explain, so okay. thank you. Okay, um, yeah, we didn't really separate between the uh, nationality and identity so much, um, but my, uh, my slightly selfish interpretation was that we could separate it into points, like whether the person was proud to be Japanese, like whether there's something specific about Japan, or whether they just thought national identity itself was important. Mm. Um, and we can see some points specifically about Japan. I think uh, Sato-san uh, is a sushi chef and he loves sushi, so this is something yeah. he's fundamentally proud of. But um, Yohei thought that you know, business speed in Japan is too slow, there should be some structural uh, change, something like that. Um, for me, I thought as a, as a British person, uh, I can how do I say? I, I yeah, heard from Japanese friends that they've experienced some racism when they've been abroad. But I feel, as a British person, I have more mobility, so I feel lucky for that that chance uh, compared to some nationalities who would experience maybe this difficulty. But I think the more interesting discussion was about yeah, talking about national identity itself and that's important. Um, yeah, Yumiko said that just to being born in the country, your national identity. You know, is really uh, compounded when you're a child, and that's something that's difficult to escape later. Even if you travel, even if you, um, you know, go abroad, you've still got that inside you. And she wanted to try something fundamentally different, so that's necessary. You need to be born uh, again to some uh, other nation. And um, John had an interesting point because he said that, um, yeah, especially during history classes, because of this desire to 
give people the national identity of patriotism. They have some twisted view of history. He called it like the was it a historical myth or something like that. that you know, we, we give a really biased view of history. And like I said, in my case, during history classes in the UK, I never learned about colonial period, I only learned about the good things, they, like, yeah, as I said, mm. about the country being the hero against the enemy. Mm. We tend to learn like that, and this causes things like conflicts. And he was thinking that actually there should be you know, a C option here, that ideally we could be born in a, a truly borderless world where like, national identity doesn't really need to be an issue anymore. That, um, yeah, we, we can escape this kind of the trap, as it were. Uh, yes, yeah, so maybe, yeah, we think that the, the C option is somewhat interesting. Have I missed anything? What about that guy married on Skype? <laughs> <laughs> that was Sato-san saying that, uh, yeah, because English is so prevalent these days that, you know, national identity is becoming a little less important because he was saying that he knows a couple of lawyers who in the contact of each other every day on Skype and eventually decided to get married and yeah, that you know, international marriage is increasing, this that's kind it. of you know English has oh. given people mobility and so yeah, that's made it slightly less important as it would have been maybe a century before. Okay. I think he was saying but, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So for the discussion of forty five minutes, uh, we divided the time into uh, thinking of two questions. First one is, do you want to reborn? Do you want to be reborn as Japanese or not? The second question is, uh, what, in what parts your self brand comes from comes from your nationality? And uh, in the first question, uh, we have two no's and three yeses. And uh, what's interesting finding is, uh, uh, in the yes part, uh, most of the uh, supporting opinions come from materialistic parts. For example, the status. Uh, your residency or status. The Japanese passport has a really large mobility in mm -hmm. internationally, and also we have uh, we have relatively good e economic. Japan is the third largest econ economy in the, in the world, so we can we can kind of enjoy such a status. <laughs> uh, whereas whereas no groups, most of the supporting ideas come from more mindset or psychological factors. For example, Japan. Japan. In the discussion, we we some of uh, some of members thought so Japan is more Japan is much, too much structural, and sometimes we we feel kind of suffocating in a well too much fixed framework, too hierarchical, or can be too kind of isolated. So in terms of the mindset, other countries being other nationality could be more uh, open to open to differences, and it can be more di diverse. So these two differences, two different ten tendencies in both yes and no are really interesting to me and to us. And the second question uh, is uh, how the self-brand, the relationship between uh, self-brand, self-identity, and uh, nationality. And uh, we didn't come to any con uh, one specific conclusion, but uh, some uh, s mm, some ideas come from the uh, kind of in inside of yourself. For example, way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Or way of way you behave. Uh, for example, the uh, punctuality mm -hmm. in Japan. In Japan, you you can hear announce in the station. Mm -hmm. The train is delayed by two minutes. We apologize, but uh, otherwise in other countries, how about that? <laughs> Thanks. <so. laughs> and uh, whereas there is uh, outside effect. Now, uh, for example, work ethics or kind of your your welfare. Uh, you you are. You are given those status or benefits from outside of your part. Mm -hmm. So when you feel when you feel yourself, maybe your identity um, is affected by your nationality, mm -hmm. both individually or both from kind of macro macro status, social as, mm -hmm. social as a whole. Yeah. So in both questions, we didn't reach any conclusion, and there is no winner or losers. But uh, it's, it was really interesting to find out those tendencies and uh, kind of. And social matters. Yes, okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. We're going to lose because uh, uh, the yesterday was my birthday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 45 years old. Okay. Um, my group started out like um, started out talking about identity. Uh, what 
aspects consist of identity. You know, the memories child from childhood, education, language, politics, media, TV news, <coughs> and pop culture, etc. And then we uh, asked the yes people why they want to be reborn as a Japanese. Uh, well, two of us said uh, they like food, Japanese food. And also, uh, they serve, I mean, here, they serve good food. Uh, not only Japanese food, but you know, Italian and other kinds of foods. And also, uh, one person said traditional culture is very uh, respectful here. And image, uh, uh, most of the people in our group uh, experienced uh, living abroad. So um, they hear lots of people in uh, overseas uh, says about uh, you know Japanese is really good uh, clearing clear, uh, cleaning up the soccer field after yeah. they cheer Japanese <laughs> national team and for example and uh, okay and uh, there are two more people me and he Martin and uh, I said why I'm what, I explain why I'm not, I don't want to be reborn as Japanese. Uh, means I'm 45, year, 45 years old and I spend most of, most of my lifetime in Japan. And I'm too, being too preoccupied things Japanese. You know, I know lots of things. I mean, good, good things about Japanese and bad things about uh, being Japanese. But, a couple of years ago, I went. I had a chance to visit uh, Botswana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So the, they have different values and different systems. Everything's different, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of the systems there uh, were not fixed yet. Mm -hmm. So you can succeed mm -hmm. if you can do it, do something. Mm -hmm. For the uh, you are the first person to do to, to do that. Mm -hmm. Something like that, mm -hmm. and. Um, Martin, you, Martin is a very uh, interesting, uh, has a very interesting background. He's from West, uh, East Germany, but it's gone now, so. Yeah. <laughs> so. If I was reborn, there's no one, yeah. I, I, can't, I can't be reborn in the same country because it just went poof. <laughs> That's the reason. <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe, uh, maybe uh, express, uh, our I. Uh, the impression is that most, most of our team, yes people, uh, experienced a very, uh, you know, they have been to a foreign country and they, they spent some time there and they uh, had some, they hear some opinions about Japanese overseas. So then they realize how good Japanese are. And Sorry, that's the that's the, the uh, that's what we we talk about. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had a very interesting group. Uh, uh, Hidesan, as you may know, uh, he where is Hidesan? Hidesan, uh, you're Korean, is it? Japanese born, yeah. Korean. And Tom, uh, he's uh, uh, from Mexico. I mean, he's Japanese, but he has a very interesting experience in Mexico. So, and Mila is from uh, Russia, and uh, uh, and uh, Ayasan and everybody. Uh, and uh, uh, we mainly talked about nationality versus to nationalism mm -hmm. and identity. <laughs> and uh, uh, identity is what we have to aim for. Mm -hmm. And nationality uh, and nationalism has a very tricky fine line. Uh, nationality might help uh, to have people find about their own identity, like being born as a Japanese or being born as a Russian or Korean. And uh, but uh, and nation when we talk about nationality, it's more about respect the diversity, you know. And um, uh, Atsushi-san, 
No, I'm Susan, who work for uh, Unicro. And um, uh, uh, we have to respect the diversity unless there is no creativity. You know, if you're all the same people thinking about the same thing, you know, we cannot come up. The conflict, we should use it for the creativity. And uh, nationalism, why we don't, I mean, a lot of people are scared about nationalism because uh, when we talk about nationalism, it's about uh, making people feel like, uh, you know, I'm superior than other nation. You know, that's what Hitler did in, in their bad, dark history. And um, we're still going on, like, you know, our neighborhood, Korea and China and Japan and, you know, Ukraine and Russia. Many, many things. We haven't changed a lot. So, um, so uh, at the same time, uh, when we talk about this, uh, sorry, we haven't went into deeper, but uh, maybe identity should be in a very close heart to each individual. And then identity is who you are, like, who is Mila? And Mira would maybe would not put Russian in front. Like if I'm asked who are who are you, I would not put Japanese in front. Mm. So who you are, maybe including gender, you know. Mm. Um, and maybe the first thing you'll say, uh, the second will say Mira would say I'm Mila, and then who you are, and maybe a writer or you know mm. I'm a journalist or whatever. And then maybe this is a, a, a little bit of Japanese thing, but what school you went, or the, what company you belong, and then the country would be the the most outside layer of who you could describe who you are. And uh, so nationalism sometimes is kind of patriotism, and it's sometimes used by the politician in a in a bad way. So it's a, for me, it's almost like a, for us, it's almost like a, a very outside limb. Mm -hmm. And this is, it just dawned on me, is a baby has, does a newborn baby, one day born, a newborn baby, does this little baby has nationalism? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, you know? I think these are educated later, you know, like who you are and then you should, you should act like Japanese, you should act like Russia, you should act like this, and then, you know, where you, should, where you go to school and whatever. And then the nationalism would come at the very end, and sometimes it's controlled, it's very similar. And uh, I would like to hand the mic to Tom, because Tom had an extremely interesting story about the nationalism and nationality in Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. Well, just from uh, let me introduce briefly. Uh, well, uh, I have been living in Mexico for the four and a half years. Um, in the Mexican Spanish, there is no phrase, no word, and nationalism and nationality. There is only one word. It's kind of the eco, mm -hmm. the eco meaning nationality and nationalism because well, the Mexico was independent from the uh, Spain that 200 years ago, but there was not Mexican before the 200 years ago because their ancestor is a Mayan or Nahuatl or some uh, native uh, Mexican. He was not Mexican. So some, uh, some blood came from the uh, European countries, the Germany, and Italy, and the Spanish, or mainly Spanish. And uh, another part of the ancestor is a Mayan. So there was not uh, Mexican. So the government decided at that time to create a nationality, or to, uh, to have a lot of that uh, national flag um, all over the uh, Mexican front side. And um, the government uh, has the national uniform, or they create the nationalities. It's kind of a mm. So it's almost like an artificial. Well, it's kind of the artificial, yes. Uh, it's kind of the creative uh, nationalities. Mm. It's kind of Why do they do that? Now? Why do they need it? Why do they need to sort of make it? After the independence war against the United States and the Spanish, uh, Spain, um, they lost nationality. Um, they didn't uh, have any way or goal uh, which they are uh, they were um, going to uh, proceed. Mm -hmm. So that's why the government decided to create. I see. Well, it, it was necessary to mm -hmm. create the identity to unite mm -hmm. their identity for the uh, national. I see.
Okay, we are a group of six, and we including a French gentleman who has lived in Japan for many years, and also one another Chinese student uh, studying at the uh, uh, Japanese university. And uh, out of six, uh, there were four, I'm uh, sorry, three yes and two no's, and one cannot answer. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, literally, uh, as you can see, yes, uh, so we were so much focused on the yes, uh, yes and no question. Mm, so, <laughs> so we forgot to discuss about uh, identity. Uh, but anyway, so based on the individual uh, experience, so we shared our own experience uh, assessing the Japanese culture or other countries' culture. And uh, for instance, uh, the self-confidence. So Japanese people uh, have a lack of self-confidence, in generally speaking. And also, some people say, someone said that uh, when we, whenever we, especially we uh, travel in uh, emerging countries, mm -hmm. so we feel there are strong aspiration for growth and starving for growth, and also they have a big dream. Uh, so compared to uh, Japanese, so uh, uh, Japanese uh, uh, people tend to be uh, slightly conservative, and we like uh, stability. And in terms of the communication style. Um, Japanese people uh, don't tend to raise hand uh, so frequently, <laughs> and uh, we don't feel comfortable uh, speaking out uh, compared to other countries' people. And uh, so Japanese society is very comfortable, so the comfortability, and also we, we have a good manner and cleanness. So I think, so while we are discussing, uh, listing out all of these things, so yes, people started to uh, question, uh, well, wait a second. So I said, even though I said yes, but uh, there are many aspects of the uh, area to be improved. So, and no, no people, and also no people started to think, hmm, maybe uh, there, there should be a good side of Japan. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the commonality uh, from those uh, uh, items uh, we, we feel that uh, uh, the Japanese society is so homogeneous, and where, whereas other countries are heterogeneous. So we are so comfortable uh, living in a homogeneous society, so therefore we are not so comfortable saying, oh, I'm different. Mm -hmm. we, we, are, we, we are not so com uh, comfortable to mm -hmm. say, I'm different. So therefore we tend to speak tend not to speak and you know look around and then okay you are you are saying <laughs> right so that, that that's mentality so so I think uh, um, so we uh, kind of concluded uh, the uh, characteristic of Japanese society uh, but uh, obviously you know nowadays the many Japanese corporations go abroad and go global and also uh, Japan wants to invite more uh, tourists uh, from other countries so obviously, the uh, diversity, uh, diversity uh, needs to be accepted uh, by the Japanese society, uh, and we have already this in 2020. So uh, our team's conclusion is that uh, we, we should maintain the good side of uh, Japanese identity. Uh, however, we, th we have to think about uh, how, how we can accept the diversity, uh, especially from other uh, cultures. And uh, we, we have to find out the uh, optimum balance uh, between maintaining the Japanese good side of Japan and also uh, looking for another aspect of uh, other culture. So that is uh, our Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Right. So let's just uh, uh, do a little bit of a brief uh, wrap-up. How many of you have changed your mind? during the course of discussion. I asked you how many of you would say yes, how many of you say no. Anybody sort of changed? I think we, the last group sort of saying, well, you know, I, I voted for yes, but probably I am getting closer to no or something like that. Anybody <coughs> changed your, your sort of mind? <laughs> yeah, tell, tell us about it. How did you, yeah. Well, the change doesn't mean I, I 100% change mm -hmm. my mind, but uh, I think uh, those ans those answers, those options have pros and cons. Mm -hmm. So if I take if I take good points from both aspects, I can be more open to diversity, and then mm -hmm. I can I don't know I can be more open to the balance. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? So 
So you are a sort of firm. <laughs> Another question. I think some of you have mentioned that if you go abroad or if you go to different places, you realize, you sort of start thinking about your nationality or identity because you realize how unique or how different you are. Is it possible? I mean, those people who stay here in Japan or in any country, you know, their whole life, how can they become aware of their own nationality? Is there any way? Or do you have to go outside to make, to realize your nationality or your uniqueness or your difference? That's one of the questions that sort of came to my mind. Because I think quite a few of you mentioned, and I, in my case as well, when I was in the States, I realized, you know, I am Japanese. And so that's another question. And another is that, I think some of you mentioned, uh, when we talked about identity, and in Japan, it's, it's often, I often hear that people start introducing themselves by the, the organization that they're affiliated with. <coughs> I am from so and so and so company, before you mention your name. <laughs> and so, uh, is that, is it possible that when you go outside of Japan, do you start introducing yourself as with the nationality in the same way as you talk about the organization? Or do you still stick to, I don't think you stick, you, you talk about the organization necessarily because people may, may not understand what you're talking about. So you may start off with your name, but if, because you are in a different country, you may be a little more aware of your nationality. And nowadays, you know, you come across with a lot of Asians, and uh, quite a few of them are not Japanese. So when you go out, outside of the country, you see a lot of Asians, but there are usually Koreans, Chinese, and so forth, rather than Japanese. So you may want to make sure that the other party, or whoever you are dealing with, communicating with, know that you are from Japan rather than any other country. So that's something that you might want to think about. The last thing is that uh, I heard, this is not necessarily related to nationality, but a lot of millennials are not, have to, are not that much conscious or are not um, do not really care too much about the affiliation. Affiliation meaning, you know, you belong to, you, you are from the school, you are from this organization, and so forth. So they don't really care. Whereas, you know, a lot of older people probably are very much aware and very much conscious of the affiliation. Do you find that, that tendency, that people do not care as much about the affiliation as before. Especially in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Uh, the older generation care about your family, mm -hmm. which family you descend from, yes. and where are you from, yeah. while the younger generations don't really care about uh, tracing of which tribe or which family. I see. Why is that? Um, definitely globalization and the, the internet and technology mm -hmm. uh, made it clear that it's not who you descended from, but it's mm -hmm. what's your achievements or what you contribute to the community more. I see. Okay. Anybody else? Go ahead. Is there something very weird uh, going on with people from Berlin? When, mm -hmm. when, when uh, two people who are born in Berlin meet each other somewhere in the world, mm -hmm. they usually uh, ask which, which district? Because mm -hmm. you want to know, is he from East Berlin or West Berlin? But you, you're not supposed to ask, are you from East Berlin or West Berlin? I see. So that's which district? And I see. my generation is like 20 years ago, so I think. And we still do that, and I don't, I'm yeah, not really sure why. I see. Mm -hmm. It's so deep in, in the identity. I see. Very interesting. Anybody else? Yeah, sometimes I feel strange when you hear that some people are in, in the community of internationalized uh, Japanese saying that. that I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a global citizen, or something yeah. like that. It, well, I feel that it's not too much. Yes, I, we should be recognized, we should recognize about the danger of nationality, for example. Mm -hmm. But we can't 100% be from the of outside the environment. Mm -hmm. the, the, we have 
multi-layer identity mm -hmm. from family or uh, some some diversified affiliation, mm -hmm. then nation is one of them. Mm -hmm. So then the question is, is nation, the importance, significance of nation mm -hmm. still very strong or is it getting less or that's one of the questions that I sort of asked at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. something that you have been thinking about. So if somebody asks you, has there been any change in how you think today, yesterday and tomorrow, how would you respond? Anything else? Go ahead. 
Um, recently, I'm working on the space development project, mm -hmm. and uh, I was wondering why so many people are talking about their nationality mm -hmm. in the space development. We're talking about the space. Mm -hmm. Space meaning space. space. Meaning oh, so I see. Okay. Um, and um, it was uh, I learned a lot today because uh, that team talked about the superiority, mm -hmm. and when we get the new land or new resource, mm. we have a tendency to talk about the nationalism mm. and um, make an alliance with the United States mm. versus Russia, mm. blah, blah, blah. Mm. We're talking about space, mm. but you know, we're working against Chinese, like, why? Mm. You know? But um, this uh, discussion helped me a lot to understand what's going on I outside of Earth. Yeah, I see. International Space Station, they were talking about the nationality. Right, right. right? Which is kind of strange in a way, which is kind of even funny. Yeah, we were talking about Moon, and we we're talking about Jupiter, and we we're talking about <laughs> Mars. It's, like, okay, yeah. it's outside of Earth. Yeah. Why nationality? But right. we had a lot of answers here. Okay. Very good. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Let me just tell you uh, the, the dates of the rest of the year. Uh, the next session, we have no session in August. So have a very good summer holidays and enjoy and relax. September the 19th, every single one is Friday here. And so we would like to, uh, we would like you to mark your calendar. And if you really, if you like, if you enjoy the session today, you know, there are, there will be more other, other sessions scheduled for the rest of the, the year. And one another thing is that for those who have been here before, you know the trick. Um, we're trying to increase the number of people who come as a repeat, repeaters. So those who have come five times will be invited to Yoko's bar in February, okay? So, and uh, for those who have already collected, I'll give you the, the stamp every, every time you come. And if you collect five, then you're invited. So if you would like to I uh, have an opportunity to be invited. Just uh, let me know. I'll give you the, the, uh, the card. You won't be free. You want to be probably charged for your drink. <laughs> right, right, yeah. yeah. Probably, probably so, have yeah. Try to get time with your yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll see how it goes. But that's, that's, what, uh, that's what we have started. So uh, I know that quite a few people are the first timers this time. But uh, we will continue having this type of session. And uh, we would like, if you're on Facebook, we have the Facebook group called Davos Experience in Tokyo. So make sure that you join that group. And I have, I have a Facebook and tweet and all these things. So I usually do have a report. And we are updating the, uh, the website. So we will let you know after the session. And we're going to sort of change the layout and so forth. Uh, because uh, the Davos experience, DavosTokyo.com came up with uh, a little bit of a complaint from the World Economic Forum <laughs> <laughs> and the city of Davos. <laughs> so, so that's how known, how well known we are <laughs> in Switzerland. So thank you very much for coming and it's now time to hit the, the, the food and the booth. So I enjoyed it.